teardown time. This is the uh, Echo Dot from Amazon. In fact, this is the uh, third revision of it. Let's uh, tear it down. The construction uh, consists of a uh, base plate which hides the screws. I'm never quite sure why designers are so paranoid at uh, people seeing screws in their product, but uh, there was a plate that covers uh, the four torques that which hold the assembly together. You always know it's going to be an interesting teardown when even the uh, the case has something interesting in it. Uh, this is an RFID tag. Uh, let me just insert a picture of it. You can, of course, see the uh, semiconductor sitting there and then the antenna traces around it so they can inject some RF energy and then read out some information. I don't know if it's for theft protection or if it's uh, for some sort of inventory control. It's certainly an unexpected find in the uh, bottom of this case. Uh, it's very nicely done. It's uh, a fabric uh, covering for the, what you would think would be the speakers, uh, but the speaker module is very sophisticated looking. Heavy cast, uh, I think it's aluminum, and we have the speaker here, and it uh, looks like they ported the uh, speaker, so there's basically one here and one here for getting the sound around. So three major assemblies once I took it apart. Uh, we have here, of course, the casting with the speaker, a really complicated casting. You can see interesting things like this is a, a clear window, and uh, there's obviously some porting of sound. Uh, the volume of sound that comes with this is quite remarkable, so even the casting seems to be uh, fairly complicated. In terms of electronics, we have uh, two circuit boards. Uh, this one here, uh, I think, is probably more the digital processor section and perhaps the audio amplifier and power. Uh, this one here definitely has the Wi-Fi and, of course, the user interface. There's a neat little ring of uh, LEDs and a microphone. Let's take a look uh, at this one first in detail. Okay, so this is the uh, CPU section of the dot. Uh, this uh, silver frame is an EMI shield. There's a metal top that uh, went on to it. Uh, and basically it constrains all the uh, electromagnetic energy from the uh, two components here. They're very digital in nature. Uh, this uh, MediaTek MT8516 uh, pardon me, uh, is a, a system on chip. It basically has, uh, well, let me pop up the, the block diagram, uh, four ARM uh, A35 uh, cores, which are fairly powerful indeed. Uh, associated with it, a whole bunch of peripherals. Uh, you can see uh, interfaces for some NAND and some ENMC. Uh, that's basically a uh, flash storage. Uh, and then on top of that, you can see there's a DRAM interface. Uh, now, if you come back to the assembly, you can see that one component sitting here. Uh, something that's become very popular is to stack uh, multiple dies uh, into a single package. And what we're seeing here from this SK Hynix, it's a Korean manufacturer. Uh, they stack some flash memory and some DRAM into a single component. And that, of course, then gets mated onto this uh, board with this uh, SOIC and provides a tremendously capable uh, CPU section. Uh, popping back to the data sheet, we can see there's a debug facility uh, with the core site. That's uh, ARM's uh, uh, debug facilities. If you could find the JTAG pads on this assembly, you could uh, attach a debugger uh, and actually start uh, single tracing the code, assuming they haven't signed the code in some way to make it secure. Uh, there's an audio codec, which, of course, is uh, pretty, pretty appropriate for the fact this is a... Uh, audio control device. Uh, one thing I didn't expect, it looks like the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are actually on this assembly, so uh, they have to carry these RF signals basically up to another assembly for the antennas. We'll see that in a minute. I guess that's another good reason why there's a shield around these two components. So you definitely don't want them inducing noise onto the uh, RF uh, chain. What else can we see? Uh, up here is a, a little crystal oscillator. It uh, basically provides the primary clocking reference source for the, uh, the SOIC. Uh, which, of course, there will be some phase lock loops or delay lock loops, which will uh, kick that up to a very high frequency. Um, up here, you can see there's two connectors. Uh, one's a power input. That's uh, a barrel jack connector. And the other one is a connector to a audio output. Uh, if you want to, you can connect uh, an external set of speakers to this unit uh, if you want to see even a better uh, audio output. Uh, let's see here. 3818. That's the 38th week of 2018. Uh, this is very helpful. This is called, it's called variable tech. This is basically when the board is manufactured. Not the assembly, but just the raw circuit board. Uh, I got my uh, Alexa in uh, January of uh, 2019, so that's a very fast sell-through. Basically, this board had to be made in China. It had to be stuffed. It had to be shipped. It had to be sold to me. And uh, that is a very fast sell-through. If you're trying to figure out if a product's popular, you should disassemble one. Look for the variable ticks here. They can always tell you uh, whether it's being uh, sold quickly or not. Uh, the outline here of this mounting hole is golden in color. Uh, that's because the surface finish of the circuit board is uh, electroless and nickel immersion gold. Uh, it's a good finish. Uh, solder wants to flow onto it very rapidly. There's two connectors here, P1 and P2. It's for the audio. Uh, it goes to the speaker. That implies the left-hand side of the circuit board is basically the audio section. 
And then the right hand side of the circuit board is the power section. Another good hint if you're looking for a power section is look for a big inductor. Or also look for this very common structure here, a small six to eight pin device and next to it an inductor and a capacitor. This is basically a voltage regulator, almost certainly a buck regulator taking a, a, a high voltage down to a low voltage. And we see that when repeated one, two, three, four times. Very, very common to see that in, in a modern assembly. Uh, up here is some variable text. They've pad printed a white stencil. And then what happens is the laser comes in and it can actually start uh, marking this assembly. This is very helpful for process control. You can mark a circuit board as it enters the production line. And then of course, uh, look at all the attributes of the board as it passes through manufacturing and if it should fail then you can look back in your records so uh, everything was assembly very much a uh, very impressive uh, modern process node with lots of evidence of uh, process control lots of evidence of signal integrity uh, containment so uh, very very appropriate okay so this is the back of the cpu section not as many components uh, but there are some interesting things to look at uh, if you look at these uh, test pads uh, they're basically for manufacturing purposes and if I just zoom in here, uh, you can sort of see they're slightly been marked. And that's because a little pogo pin, they call it, will uh, touch the pad here, either through something called a flying probe or they'll build a whole jig which has many pogo pins in it. It presses into these contacts and then they can uh, test to make sure the assembly is manufactured correctly. They can download the most appropriate firmware and uh, send it on its way. So a very common technique. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, solder here. This is the uh, EMI shield on the other side. So... What they're doing here is they're trying to tie this down to the ground plane as as well as they can. Uh, this is the ribbon cable connector. It goes up to the other circuit board we'll take a look at here uh, in a second. A large electrolytic capacitor. Uh, this blue marking is very typical in manufacturing. Uh, it's basically someone marking the board stating it's, it's gone past a certain step in the process. Uh, manufacturing is a very uh, cost-constrained world. And uh, say you put a sticker on a board is very expensive, so they often will just mark it with an ink pen. So that's the bottom side of the board. Let's uh, pop up to the top part of the board now. Okay, so this is the uh, top assembly, the bottom side of it. Uh, another EMI can you can see here. Here's some more of that pink thermal interface material. Same idea, basically, they're trying to draw heat from whatever's under this, this shield onto the uh, casting. Now, I'm not going to take the shield off. Uh, it's, it's soldered on, unlike the other one, which just pops off. Um, I actually want to put my Alexa back in service. Uh, so I don't want to risk damaging it because I think it's uh, kind of an interesting gadget to have. Um, but you can see some typical RF things. You can see this trace coming out uh, of the bottom of the can going this direction here. And you can see a characteristic, there's an inductor, an inductor, and a capacitor. Uh, this is a bandpass filter. And then it runs through with another capacitor and it runs into a resistor probably, probably zero ohms. It looks like they can selectively stuff the assembly. They could put something else here. Uh, and they decided not to just pass the resistor. Some sort of impedance matching here and there's more antenna than it actually is under uh, this uh plastic uh ring uh, let's see these things here it's called a via fence uh, basically it's a way of making sure that the uh, electromagnetic energy that's inside the planes doesn't get pushed out it provides a, a way of stitching all the planes together and uh, is very effective now here uh, we see the microphone in fact it's one of four microphones on the assembly probably a mems type microphone and then associated with there's an analog to digital converter. Let me just uh, zoom back out to the uh, whole picture and we can see the location of them. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And then this ADD converter. And there's another one here as well. So it looks like there's two ADD, uh, pardon me, one ADD converter. It's a dual channel to every two microphones, which would make a great deal of sense. If we uh, scroll back into the assembly and they'll come to the top, we see another antenna. Uh, of course, because there's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I think they may have them on separate antennas. Uh, same thing, you can see the traces. You can see that they've uh, via stitched around the planes. They don't want any signals crossing across the plane that would induce a voltage uh, into the antenna line. Comes up, it uh, looks like there was positions here for a filter, but they didn't actually populate it. Just some zero ohm resistors, then off to some sort of impedance matching, and then again to the actual antenna structure. Uh, here's the uh, ribbon cable connection that goes uh, to the CPU section through the assembly. Um, lots of custom silicon. This one's marked T3003. Couldn't find anything on the website about it. Not too much of a surprise. I think Amazon's moving a couple million of these units, so you can definitely afford some custom uh, silicon. Uh, this is a touchdown point, another spring basically. It's sort of the, the ground plane. This will touch onto the casting, another EMI containment uh, feature. So uh, very appropriate for that as well. Okay, so here's the top side of the circuit board. 
Uh, there's some sort of a spacer ring here in black, the circuit board, of course, in green. And uh, you can see there's there's four circles. Uh, that's for each of the uh, switches. There's a uh, little dome contact switches. Uh, some of the missions are very straightforward. They are just simply dome switches. Uh, some have a couple of uh, LEDs they can light up. Uh, and one uh, has what looks like a proximity sensor to it. Let me just uh, switch a different photograph. Uh, this is sitting next to one of the assemblies. Uh, in the center here, this is some sort of sensor, a uh, light sensor, I would suspect. Uh, you can see, of course, the sea of gate, the digital logic section here, analog section here. I presume this somehow senses the uh, location of a finger or something, and uh, from that, of course, can uh, make uh, the Alexa do something. So uh, even the top buttons in this assembly are actually pretty complicated, and uh, that's the top of the assembly. Well, there we have it, a teardown of the uh, Amazon Echo Dot 3rd revision. Hopefully that is of interest. If so, uh, give this video a thumbs up. And, uh, of course, I encourage you to subscribe and uh, to encourage me to create even more videos on things I can finally tear down.